Welcome back, Foxy Games UK, new and existing subscribers. It is Wednesday, September 25. So if you are new around here, I'm Fox, your reliable source of aggregated video game news, speculation and rampant rumour. So Foxy Games UK news sourced via multiple outlets. Links are available in this video's description where applicable. So in today's video, Sony PlayStation State of Play feature aired yesterday, followed by Microsoft's Inside Xbox show. Now, I had joined BitCloud Gaming for the State of Play livestream where various opinions were shared and you can check it out on this very channel. And it appears there's a ton of differing opinions out there as to how it all went down. Some gamers preferred State of Play, some Inside Xbox. Sadly, a lot of public opinion, particularly on Twitter, seems to be based on which platform holder is most preferred as opposed to whether the game games are actually good or not. Some things never change. Now starting with State of Play since it aired first, with a runtime of approximately 20 minutes, State of Play would have been lackluster if not for The Last of Us Part 2 segment. More on The Last of Us Part 2 later. We also saw some pretty impressive footage from the single player mode of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 with characters' faces verging on photorealism at times. Now, Infinity Ward are bringing us a totally new engine that will service next-gen consoles, PlayStation 5, Xbox Scarlet and next-gen PC hardware and it looks to be that active Vision are taking really a bite out of EA's Battlefield series, introducing huge open multiplayer maps for some serious team or indeed solo work. Suffice to say, Sony have the Call of Duty deal, so they're kind of obligated to show it off. And gamers opting for the PS4 version of Modern Warfare get a whole year's exclusivity with Special Ops mode, of which will not be available on Xbox nor PC hardware until October 2020 at the earliest, which will probably help sell a fair few more copies than the other platforms combined. Now we also witnessed a pretty decent showing if you're a PlayStation VR user, really Grand Theft Auto 5 developer Rockstar Games stealth dropped LA Noir PlayStation VR which was made available for download during the show as well as a few new game reveals from smaller studios working on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR projects. Gamers were treated to a demo of PlayStation 1 Remake Medieval for PS4 though PlayStation Japan kinda killed off any element of surprise by accidentally deploying the demo early. Still if you want to try it out you can head over to the PlayStation Store and download the demo after you've watched this video of course. Course. Don't leave me hanging, people. Now, Death Stranding Limited Edition PlayStation 4 Pro and a urine colored DualShock 4 controller, it must be said. Sony once again opted for a cheap looking stickers type transfer design, which must be said is yet another missed opportunity from Sony Interactive Entertainment. Sony PlayStation is the market leader by a huge margin, and yet they just cannot or do not seem really willing or compelled to compete with the laser etched designs of the special slash limited edition Xbox One consoles. Gears 5 being a good example of how to design a custom console. Okay, so The Last of Us Part 2 pretty much carried the entire show in terms of Sony first party and it did not disappoint as expected. I was slightly concerned pre-show as I did not want Sony Interactive Entertainment's premier developer Naughty Dog really to show too much off of the story and thankfully they didn't. The Last of Us Part 2 looks absolutely stunning and I don't say that lightly. I mean, these PS4 games seem to look better and better as the system ages. In the trailer, we saw a few familiar faces and characters, some combat, new enemies, vicious dogs, and differing locations, etc. It looks like we'll be traversing sections of the map via boat and on horseback. Toward the end of the impressive, albeit brief trailer, we see the return of Joel who many initially thought to be dead, existing only in Ellie's head, for the most part, not so. Joel is back, and uh, you know, he does look aged a bit, but uh, he still looks as badass as ever. If you'd like to replay or catch up on The Last of Us, remastered edition prior to the sequel's release you can since Sony are offering the remastered version as part of October's PlayStation Plus lineup alongside MLB The Show 19. Now The Last of Us Part 2 is set for a February 21st 2020 release exclusively to PlayStation and let me tell you it cannot come soon enough. So that was State of Play, not a ton of surprises, yeah, but uh, The Last of Us Part 2 was its saving grace. 
As for Microsoft's monthly show inside Xbox, well, unfortunately, Microsoft fared no better with the surprises. There were some standout titles, some of which are multi-platform, therefore we'll see a PS4 release and PC. However, the Outer Worlds looked exceptionally good, carrying with it that classic Obsidian RPG blueprint. Many are comparing the Outer Worlds to Fallout, which is unsurprising since a lot of the same dev team are involved in the project. Hopefully it's less buggy than Bethesda's series though. Now Ghost Recon Breaking Point received a full presentation featuring actor John Bernthal and Daisy seems to still be hovering around. I thought people had moved on from Daisy, apparently not. Pirate Adventure Atlas looked pretty awesome visually, though seemingly the pirate game Sea of Thieves would like to be. In fact, Atlas looks like the mature version of Sea of Thieves. Yeah, it's an online multiplayer pirate game made by the developer of Ark Survival and is going into Xbox Early Access as a PC crossplay title. Enough said. Okay, so Microsoft went into some detail regarding its Project X Cloud game streaming service, which from my perspective is very hard to give a damn about, though I won't be selfish toward those who do care about it. Here's the meat and veg. So head of Xbox game streaming, Kareem Chowdhury, detailed the service and when the public can really get their hands on the beta. Starting in October, signups are available now with invitations limited to just three regions to begin with. The rollout will begin with Korea, the US and the United Kingdom. Games available during the preview, Gears 5, Halo 5 Guardians, Sea of Thieves and Killer Instinct. Now, some of those games are fast paced, so it will be interesting really to see how xCloud copes with latency issue. You'll need an Xbox One Bluetooth controller and an Android device, either a mobile or tablet. Still no word on pricing, but since Microsoft are willing to allow millions of gamers to complete Gears 5 for just one US dollar, I expect Microsoft to be more than just a little bit generous with the service pricing. So yeah, inside Xbox wasn't terrible by any means. Just a little unsurprising, much like State of Play, which in itself is unsurprising given we are in the current state of this generation. We are at the end, so don't expect too much. Now, the one issue I have with State of Play is that it feels a little soulless with just a voiceover and trailers. I guess I'm too used to Sony's live events, at least with Nintendo's Direct, let's be honest, which State of Play is attempting to replicate. Well, at least with Direct, you get to see an actual human being, giving the show some personality. Still, State of Play is in its early format. Hopefully, Sony can make the necessary improvements without wheeling out numerous developers with little to no charisma. As for inside Xbox, well, it is uh, hmm, seemingly flatlined. Microsoft's format seems way longer than it needs to be, and Major Nelson and crew treats its viewers like 10-year-olds. Ooh, arr, I'm a pirate. Totally cringeworthy. I wish they'd uh, treat us like adults. However, if we overlook that somewhat cheesy and forced presentation style, Microsoft showed off some pretty decent games during their hour-long show, though it could easily have been made to fit into around 30 minutes or so. That being said, I didn't expect too much from a late September inside Xbox since XO19 takes place in London from November 14 through to 16, when I suspect the main bulk of new Xbox announcements will be made. Though, what say you? Did you enjoy either show? Have an opinion? Share it in the comments. Go ahead, sound off. Share your thoughts and opinions on today's video because that unfortunately brings us to the end of yet another video, but let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments. None of that fanboy, fangirl nonsense. And for all your current and next gen news, updates, rumor and rampant speculation, hit the like button, spread the word and keep it locked to Foxy Games UK. Remember, relevant links for applicable can be found in this video's description. Subscribe to Foxy Games UK. Remember to hit the notification bell so you never miss content. Thumbs up if you like it here and help us reach more like-minded gamers simply by sharing this video. Consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon and or grab yourself a Foxy Games UK branded t-shirt or hoodie available now in various colors and designs. You'll find both links in this video's description. Truly appreciate the support. And that concludes our time together today. It was great hanging out. Until the next video, remember, play games, not corporations. Thank you.